Hi, and welcome to another edition of A Lot of Help. I'm James Lodge, Jr., certified life coach, host, musician, actor, author. I do all kinds of stuff. And today I'm talking to somebody who you may recognize, some of you may recognize, from many things. But of course, he's known as half of Wilson on the hit daytime drama Days of Our Lives. Um, he's an Emmy winner, of course, for his role as Jackson Sonny Kiriakis, or Kiriakis. I actually interviewed a, a, a Greek facial plastic surgeon earlier today. So that was nice. His name was Dimitri. Oh, so nice. Great. So it's all Greek stuff today, I guess, for whatever. It is, and, yeah. That's Mr. Freddie Smith. Hi, Freddie. Why, hello there. Good yeah. to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, okay, so we, we also, folks, we're also going to talk about, uh, as you probably see in the title when I put this out, talking about Bell's palsy. We both had it. And uh, we talked about, this, like, God, this is like maybe five, six months ago I talked to you about this. And we finally made it happen. It took, it took a virus to get us together to actually make it happen easier. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we both are yeah, we talked about the day of days. I remember we were, yeah. we were chatting about Bell's palsy for a second there. And uh, so, yeah, I'm very excited to be on and, and chat about it. Well, first of all, how are you and Alyssa doing? We're good. We're good. We're just kind of uh, just figuring out a new routine and we're trying to just stay positive. You know, we, we spend probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes every day, like getting educated yeah. on what's going on in the news just to, you know, so that we're up to date and staying safe and, uh, and then the rest of the time, we're also not trying to consume ourselves in it where you have that doomsday kind of feel like we want to have hope and positivity and, and get back to the, to the life that we were all uh, used to. So um, it's, it's kind of surreal, but we're doing okay. Thank you for asking. How, how's everything with you? Good. I've, I've been home exactly nine days of this recording. I have not left my compound. So I call it the compound. Uh, I have a oh. huge yard. So I have a huge front yard, huge backyard with gardens. I garden. I have fruit oh, nice. trees. I got my first uh, loquats came out, and I had my first harvest. So I'm growing nice. my own food. Growing my own food, folks. Um, and uh, and so I'm lucky. I know I'm fortunate. I have a big house. I have a big yard. I'm down in Inglewood, so I'm not I'm not far from like the ocean. I can go. To the, I'm, I'm 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 pretty lucky where I'm at. So I'm able yeah. to, I stayed home the entire last nine days. So I'm not left my. Well, that's good. That's good. It's good to stay, you know, stay home. And that's what we're doing. We're social distancing. We're, we're going for walks, but we're walking on the other side of the sidewalk. Like we don't want anyone to like be near. And so we're, we're following protocol. And you have a dog too, right? Yeah. Little you Benji. Yeah. You take dog out. Yeah. So, um, and it's, it's just, it's a, it's a strange time, but we're going to get through it. And I think we're going to get through it. I'm just doing what they asked me to do. I'm like, they asked me to stay home, stay home. Are you guys doing any of the Freddie Alyssa show um, while you're on kind of this hiatus thing, kind of inside? Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we're, we actually just did our first Zoom interview because um, uh, we we wanted to continue to have guests on, and uh, we had Guy Wilson on, uh, which was really fun. So we're gonna have a bunch more coming up in the near future, and uh, I think we're gonna be filming one tonight. So we put out you know one to four a week, just depending on schedule. But since there is no schedule, we're gonna be putting out a lot more now. So yeah, there, there, we're gonna there, be there, ramping it up. Isn't that weird? It's like, it's like, me too. I'm always like, okay, well, um, usually I'm busy doing other things, working. So it's like, okay, do once a week or this. And like now it's like, oh, we can put out whatever I want to. Like well, I can do whatever I, whatever I want. Um, yeah, you got plenty of time to focus. And we're, we're fortunate that we can actually do something, you know, using the internet. You know, I, my heart goes out to people who have a job that they unfortunately can't work from home. And, you know, that's its own issue. So I feel blessed that it, at least with us, with one of our passion projects, we can still continue moving forward and have that sense of accomplishment and fulfillment at the end of the day. Um, so I feel very grateful that it lined up that way for us in, the, in these times. Yeah, um, I, people, he has a show called The Freddie and Lister Show, and it's really good. And so some of my buddies have been on it, Tony Moore, Tango Vea. I mean, some people have been on, on your show, and it's, it's a fun show. He talks, to, he talks like I do. We just have conversations about things. Yeah, so I love yeah, that. this is where you can just educate people and – and it's just easy to watch. I think we're so used to like interview shows uh, because of the time restriction on most television shows. But when you have podcasts or interview shows like yourself here, you, you have the time to have an actual discussion and get to know people and hear their ideas. And I think that's what's important. Where can they find it? Um, you can find it on iTunes for the audio or if you want to watch it, uh, it's on YouTube. And you can find it, you know, the Freddie and Alyssa show on YouTube. Yeah, make sure you get that out there. Okay, so before we get into the other stuff, I have to mention two amazing, I feel Emmy-worthy scenes and um, that you did recently. The whole time jump thing really reinvigorated Days of Our Lives. I feel like it just totally, they, it was very ballsy of them to do this, to go a year ahead and just and start yeah. storytelling 
backwards. I thought, very cool. So for yeah. you, there was one first scene, the first sequence of scenes, you, my buddy, Wally Kurth, who I'll be on the show, will be on the show. Um, he had told me a day of days, he goes, some of the best stuff in my career is coming up. And he's had a long career, two soaps, simultaneously, two soaps. General Hospital yeah. Hospital Lives. He said, some of the best stuff is coming up. He was like, James, wait till you see it. Some of the best stuff is coming up. The scenes where you find out Adrian died, who plays your mother, who's your, your mother on the show, I thought they were so painful to watch. Um, and so just real between you and Wally. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Just amazing stuff. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, those are the most... Um challenging times uh when you're when you're an actor when you're on the, when when you're doing a soap uh probably anything prime time or a movie when you have to pretend that your mother has passed away oh. um or if it's a best friend or a child yes. uh any sort of um it's the most challenging work because you can't really fake it or people are going to smell it all over it and um true. so true. you know it, it's that and when people wake up from when they're sleeping Yes. In television, I go, really? You just cried your eyes out, but you can't wake up? Like, come on. Uh, those are my two pet peeves. Um, so, you know, I, we really needed to get there emotionally. Uh, it helped to have the true love and relationship with Judy and Wally through all these years. Uh, I think if you just were do, to do a guest spot on a random show and had to pretend this person was your mom would have been much more difficult. Sure. But the fact that we had the relationship, the trust, um, looking into Wally's eyes made me cry, you know, having Judy there made me cry. So that was all there. We did our prep work and then you just have to find a way to get yourself emotional. You know, right now I'm in a really good mood. If you asked me to, to cry, I would have to take five minutes, watch some sad videos, listen to some songs that get me down so that at least I'm closer naturally to the, you know, so I'm there. So that's what we did. I, I can't speak for Wally. I don't know how he did it, but for me personally, I just had to watch videos that made me sad. And then I just trusted the words and really made myself believe that this was happening. And just watching Wally perform helped me be, do that performance. Um, he, I mean, it wasn't the best of his career. I mean, he wasn't lying. I mean, it really was. And I like how you said that you were fully present and trust, like you said, trusted the words, trusted Wally. And because yeah. not, all, not all acting partners are like that. I mean, you're lucky to have an acting partner. You can go, I can trust him. He's going to bring it so I can bring it too. Yeah, he affected me. And I think um, if I did my job, I affected him. And that just keeps building it to become more real. And uh, interestingly enough, even with Chandler, when, because I, I didn't get to see Wally and Chandler's performance live oh. like I usually do yeah. because I'm usually – acting but i'm also aware that we're filming something I'm, I'm like okay he has this monologue and i'm in it but like i'm aware that it's chandler or it's wally so sometimes you come in and out but you can do that in an emotional scene you don't have the luxury of breaking character to look at the cameras to do something while they're not on you you have to be fully committed so i never got to enjoy chandler or wally's performance until it aired it and so, so it was good. cool to watch but they were so damn good that it just made me a better actor. So it, we just all got lucky. The whole cocktail just worked. And I'm, I'm so happy that it affected people who watched it. That's our main goal. Lightning in a bottle, they say. Lightning in a bottle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you. We yeah. really enjoyed filming that. Well, the next, the, uh, the next one that affected a lot of us and affected me that I thought was amazing. Um, the amazing, vivacious, super nice, funny Suzanne Rogers, who plays Maggie. Yeah. To watch you in character go off on her, which was justified, obviously, for the character, um, was so painful for us to watch. Maggie's the good girl, so she's the, you know, the pillar of the community. She killed your mother. And so you going off on Uncle Vic and going off on Xander, we've seen that before. And I go, okay, that's fine. But when you turned around, I was like, hey, like, no, bitch, now it's your turn. To this woman we love, I mean, that she's beloved. Um, it must have been juicy to play as an actor, right? It must have just so juicy. I mean, it was just, or was it hard for you? Like, because she's so, I mean, it was just, it was hard to watch. It was painful to watch. Well, I was aware of, um, I actually asked the producer on the floor, I go, I'm like, this is Maggie. You're right. I said, <laughs> so, I literally, I, and, and I very rarely will, 
like, you know, I, I, I always take notes from the director, but I, I very rarely, or producer, I very rarely will ask because I, I know the character. And this was one of those times that I go, would Sonny really destroy this woman? And I asked, I go, this is Maggie. And the producer's like, no, go after her. And I go, that's all I needed to hear. And uh, I was like, I'm going to crush this woman. It's and it. it's fun because you go, you go, how can I startle Suzanne as an actress? And how can I really go after her? Like, I want her to feel this. And if she is stunned and afraid and feels like, you know, affected, then the audience will. So it really helped that I had a little momentum by being able to yell at Xander and Victor and get okay. myself there, take that beat, walk down, prepare, and then just destroy this woman. It was really fun because in life, <laughs> sometimes you feel like you want to do that, but there's repercussions and you can't do that. Um, so it's fun to be able to do that scene. Everyone's crying. Everyone's like, what the hell? And then they yell cut and you're like, who wants lunch? I'm gonna go get a turkey wrap. And uh, you hug and you, you go along and there's no repercussions. So <laughs> I love that. There, there's something really fun about digging into that kind of anger because you don't, I don't do that in life. You know, that's a very rare occurrence. So uh, you actually cry more than you, than you yeah. act like that. Yeah. That yeah. kind of anger is rare in life um, for most people. Yeah. So well, if it's fun to... Like, your no, the way you both react to each other because she did jump like it's like she physically jumped, and when you and the inflection in your voice, um, how the, the cadence of your voice, how you were speaking to her, because you're right, it had built from yelling at them first, and now it's like now it's your turn, and you're the one yeah. who did it. Yeah, 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 and and you have to connect to it. I think I think a mistake some people make is they go, "How angry can I get? How loud?" And it's not about that. It's about how do, I, how do I affect this woman across from me? Exactly. And that's what I had to do, is how do I let her know how much I'm hurt and how mad I am? Um, and uh, so that was one of my favorite scenes. I'm glad that it turned out well. Interestingly enough, I wasn't even really feeling good that day. Oh. And, um, and, and I, was like, I, I was like, I don't think it played, because in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't feel good. But, um, but once I got into that headspace, it, it turned out really well. So, um, so I'm glad that it, that it turned out that way. You're a trained professional. That's why. You know, you, you turn, that's you turn why. Off. You're a trained professional. No, it didn't work. <laughs> and, I, and I'm saying this now. I, I, I did this to James Reynolds a couple of years ago. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm time stamping it. Emmy nomination next year. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I yeah, did I don't, I don't, James Reynolds, and he won that year. And he, he said to me, you did say I was going to win. I said, I knew it. I'm, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Well, there we go. I'll take an Emmy in 2021. Let's do it. <laughs> I know. I'd say it's just, it's just amazing work. So I want to talk about that. So you lead into something, and that's a good lead into, um, you said you were, you were just not feeling well, but let's talk about something even more serious. Um, you had Bell's palsy, just like I did. Uh, you had it. So I yeah. want to find out from you, but this is going step by step. So how, what were, the, did you have any warning sign when you look back on it now? For me, it was an earache for a couple of days. What was it for you? Um, this whole story is crazy. Um, but for me, it was um, my taste. I thought for two days, things were tasting funny. And I was just like, why? Like, that's weird. And then the morning where it actually happened, I got a McDonald's um, breakfast biscuit. And those are already kind of dry. Yes. But I was having an extremely difficult time eating this breakfast sandwich to the point that I couldn't finish it. And I was like, this is odd. So I, for, for two days and then that morning, it was super weird. And I didn't think anything of it other than this is weird until it happened about eight hours later. Then I looked back and go, oh, wow, those were the warning signs. That was me. I, so for me, it was, that's funny, they say taste goes away. For me, it was an earache. And I was like, I was taking like stuff for it. Like, why is it not going away for like about two days? And the night before, I had four shows to tape. And I had to wear headphones. After Buzz, you've been there. I had to wear headphones. I was like, ow. I'm like, okay, so I had one headphone kind of off my ear a little bit. I was like, so I was like it just kind of hurt a little bit. I'm like, why is it not going away? And I was like, I'm going to go to the doctor to see if maybe I have an ear infection. Or something. I'm thinking something totally not Bell's palsy. Um, and I look back, actually, at those tapes. I did Dish and Days, which you've been on for. I did GH Report, I did Restless Rap, and I did Bowl Break. I did all four in a row. I did five hours of television. Like, I talked to death. I don't do it very often, but I did it that day. 
and I remember, and I looked at those tapes, I'm going, my mouth's doing some weird stuff. I have it on tape. I can see it. I'm but this wasn't it. before, but this isn't before it totally hit? This was the before it totally leading hit. up? Oh, after it totally hit. But before it totally hit. I'm looking going, um, my mouth did a weird thing. It was like, it was like intermittent. It was like all of a sudden I'm talking, all of a sudden my mouth didn't form the word right. And I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I'm on camera. You know, I'm, busy, yeah. I'm on camera, perform, basically performing, so to speak, talking about doing days or our lives. But I could see it. So it wasn't the whole show, but I could see a couple of times. I'm like, I'm not doing something weird. It's really trippy to watch that I have it actually on tape. But I remember my ear was hurting. Um, and then the next morning, which we'll get into the next morning, then it, then it, then it happened. Um, and mine, mine took a course over three days to fully happen. They told me it could be up to 72 hours or 48 hours. Something I can't do. I'm not bad at math. Um, like 48 hours. But it took, it took about two or three days for the full left side of my face to droop. So how, did, how, did, how was it for you in the beginning? Well, my, mine's actually, I, I haven't thought about this in a while. And yeah, uh, this is sure. not. So I was flying to D.C. to go speak to members of Congress and do a charity event about bullying in schools and physical education. And that was 2013. And it was from, uh, it, I was, it was with Days of Our Lives PR, but there were also other actors and, and celebs that were going that weren't all in the soap opera world. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, so I can't really remember the details, but I was going to DC. I fell asleep on the plane after that McDonald's sandwich. I woke up 30 minutes before we landed in DC and I looked over to the publicist and I said, my face feels funny. And I was smiling and she goes, your face is like crooked. And I was like, wait, what? And so I was on the plane. I was touching my face. I was like, what the hell is going on? And um, we finally landed. We got to the hotel um, and we had some sort of like preliminary, like meet and greet or something that we did for three hours. My face is numb. And I couldn't smile. I mean, it was like this. Yeah, no, I, I, I know. I know how to, I know. Right, you know it. And, and, um, and then I finally, when that was done around 10 p.m., we called a doctor to the hotel. He diagnosed me with Bell's palsy and said, you need to get on some steroids. And it really scared me because my 89-year-old grandmother at the time had Bell's palsy and hers never healed. Yeah, I know some don't heal. And, and the, the doctor said, well, you're young. You're 20." three or 24, however old I was then, she goes, he goes, your grandma's different. So this should go away in three to six weeks, but it could last a year. I'm thinking my acting career is over. What the hell? Um, right. And then we go to me and a, um, one of the publicists go to a 24 hour CVS in DC around one in the morning and we get steroids, uh, like some prescription to start taking. Probably prednisone or something but, probably. Yeah. Whatever it was. And then did you buy scotch tape? to tape your eyelids shut at night? Okay, so what I had to do was, I actually got, okay, so that was really weird because I was told, because the eye, my eye was watering so bad and it was getting dried out and then it got dried out. Um, so, but I lucked out, my eye wasn't a major problem. I had an eye patch on. I got an eye, I went and bought an eye patch and that actually helped me just, I just like closed my eyes and the eye patch. So that, that wasn't a major problem for me with the eye. After a while, it did close my tongue. It just, I couldn't blink it as much. And it exactly, kept, they kept doing this like that. But my eye wasn't. I have like, some people have real problems with their eyes. They couldn't close and shut. I mean, mine actually would close. That's one of the lesser problems I had during that year. Uh, Bell's palsy. That's crazy. I don't. It just affects everything over there. And but yeah, I was laying in bed at two in the morning. I had to be up in four hours to go do an entire seventeen-hour event day. Go speak in front of a hundred some people, and I was in the mirror putting scotch tape over my eye and laying in bed. And I was like, how am I going to do this? And um, I was like, well, let's just see what happens. Like, it's not my fault. So let's just see what happens. And I ended up falling asleep. I woke up and I went and did this entire event. Um, and if you look, if you Google, I'm sure there's pictures. I was in a teal shirt. If you Google like Freddie Smith, Washington DC event, maybe it'll come up, but it's, it's some of the rare red carpet photos I've taken where I was just like this. Like I didn't did my big smile because I couldn't. And everyone's like, smile, smile, smile. Right. Um, so I was in D.C. the whole entire time. And then after two days, we finally came home. And then I just got immersed into YouTube videos trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Did you have that same experience, like doing all your research, panicking, being like, what am I going to do? 
when you just said my acting career, I it just it just flashed me back to my thing too. Everything I do is my mouth. Everything I do, television, yeah. radio, voiceover, I mean, everything I do uses my mouth, and I couldn't use my mouth. It was it was like it was a big stomach punch to me because I was like, okay, because I'm a little older than you are, so I I was a little worried because I was older and at the time I was. I was like maybe 80 pounds heavier than I am now. I was, I was, I was just bigger. I was a bigger guy. I was like over 300 pounds. The biggest I'd ever been. So I, and so my face was all big and everything. But it was so weird when it happened. It scared me. But like you said, at first, it doesn't hurt. This is a weird thing about Bell's palsy. Your face is going numb, but it doesn't hurt. It's like, oh, that's weird. Um, I can't spit correctly. Or I can't, I was brushing my teeth. And I, and the, the stuff was going on this side. I'm like, I can't spit. It was like, I couldn't form. It was like this weird thing that was happening to me that I couldn't really, you know, most things that happen, you feel a pain. There was no any, I typical, there was no pain really when it drooped and you know, when it went paralyzed, you go paralyzed. Yeah. At that point there was, I had pain later, but there was no pain then. Um, but I was like, okay, what was I get? They gave me the prednisone. They gave me a cyclovir. Um, they were like, okay, James, same thing. Oh, it'll probably be done in like a, you know, three to six weeks, blah, blah. And then my mother had Bell's palsy. Hers was mild. Her face didn't droop as much. And she just lasted maybe three weeks and she was done. I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think of that. But he told me it could be over the next couple of days, it'll get worse. So it did. And at first I was like, oh, this is kind of mild. Okay. He said, rest. He said, stop everything. I, okay, here's the funny part, folks. I had an interview scheduled that night for my show Breaking Into with an ex-Solid Gold dancer. Now, you older folks may remember Solid Gold was a show in the 80s. <laughs> and I, the main lead dancer, Darcel, I found her online. I was going to have her on my show. And I was very excited. I was like, but I had to kids that cancel everything, James. You can't talk. You can't, you can't do anything. Um, so and he said, no stress. That that's the thing about Bell's palsy. Uh, it's a virus that gets into your, your system. And sometimes stress will exacerbate it. So I was like, stop everything. So I stopped everything that whole week, thinking it'll be a week probably, you know, to yeah. make it better. Um, so then um, for me, to answer your question, it wasn't until maybe three weeks later when I wasn't getting better, I was like, I probably should look into some stuff. And I did YouTube, I did, and now everybody be careful, of course, when you look at, <laughs> look at stuff, there's, there's a lot of information out there, but YouTube, I talked to a dietitian. Uh, I told my doctor, can you give me a dietitian? Because I, I'm a very kind of holistic person anyway. I was like, are there teas I can take? Are, are, are there foods I shouldn't eat that could help with? Because the one thing they do tell you is that chances are, for most people, not for everybody, there is nerve regeneration. And it does, there's, there's muscle memory that it does come back. And that's kind of like the positive thing possible that can happen. So I was thinking, what can I do to help that? And so I started doing research too. Like, dude, I started, I mean, I was researching the, and, and then also do, I was at home. So I did everything I could. I was like researching them. And I saw things like vitamin B and vitamin B6 and B12. They help with, you know, inflammation because basically you're inflamed. And that's why it has to, so, so I started doing a lot like you. Like when should you start doing exercise? There's a lot of things you have to think about. When do you do exercise? When's too soon to do exercises? How should you, I mean, I, I, I had on my phone, which was my original phone, I had on there, uh, from this one YouTube video, how to exercise. She was like, wait like a month or so. Like, don't you gum, don't use straws, don't any of that kind of stuff. And then she showed you how to use facial exercises. So I was like, you, same thing. Yeah, you're panicked. Because you're like, what the hell is this? What is and, it? Um, and you can't speak correctly. And I, and I always make the joke that, um, that the two letters that are hardest to say are B and P. And the damn thing is called Bell's Palsy. You can't even say what you have when you have it. Exactly. Yeah, the toughest thing was I, had, I went back to work, and um, the very first time that Will and Sonny made love. Yes. I had Bell's palsy, and they yeah, shot it from the somewhere. Of so how, tell me, talk, about, talk, talk me through that. How did that, how, because you couldn't smile or emote that much, right, yet? No, I just had to stay, like, as long as I didn't smile, you couldn't tell I had it. But as soon as I smiled, you, it's like, like that. So 90% for those two, three weeks, everything was shot from my good side of my face. Um, there was only one scene that someone wrote and goes, did you have a root canal or something? Like someone noticed, but most people didn't notice because I just kind of talked right here. And if you just stay like this, 
and don't, you know, yeah. there was also that scene um, around Halloween where I wore that Gaucho Marx mask. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that scene that people really liked, I remember feeling so happy because it covered up my Bell's palsy and I could actually smile and have fun during that scene. But it was really hard. It was like fumbling lines because you can't say every word. And so it was a tough two weeks, three weeks. Um, but then it slowly started coming back where you could, I would smile and I'd go, oh, I can actually see two teeth now. Oh, three teeth, four teeth. And the last thing that came back was my ability to whistle. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So now when I get anxiety where I feel numbness, I go, oh, my gosh, do I have Bell's palsy again? I just go, Me too. I go, oh, I can whistle. I'm good. Yeah. I don't have it. Yeah, same here. Well, they say it can come back sometimes. They say it can, but it depends on anxiety, and they say it's not stress will bring it back on. So you got to be careful. How long did you have it? You said, like, months. Oh, so for me, I got, okay, so let me tell you, like, so I did, do, so folks, I did document my journey on my really quick James Hodge Jr. show. You can go on YouTube and find stuff there, videos there. but. Um, I had a setback because they didn't wean me off the prednisone correctly, the steroid. Um, I'm an ex-nurse. So normally I would be, I think I was panicked, so I didn't pay attention when they gave it to me. And what's supposed to happen is, let's we'll, we'll say it's 60 milligrams. You go 60 for five days, then you go 50 for five days, or 40, and then 20, and then 10, then you just go up. They went 60, 40, done. So I actually, after I took my last steroid and then I didn't have any more to take, I had withdrawals. So I know what it feels like to go through withdrawals and I was actually in the oh, hospital wow. and I almost died. So I had that setback and stress. It was wow. very, it was crazy. Um, and I'll, I'm, I'll just, never, I'm thinking about right now, I'll never forget that feeling of just the sweats, the palpitations and just, I mean, all this craziness was going on because I wasn't weaned off. So they had to wean me off. They had to go back in and kind of wean me off it. So I had a little setback, which caused stress in the belt palsy, of course. Um, but it took me, I will say, total of eight months that I, I was at from zero, from 100% to maybe we'll say 40%. And then like you, at 40%, I went back to AfterBuzz. And when I did my first, I was so nervous. Oh my God, I was so nervous. I was excited, which I'm sure you felt the same thing. You were excited to be back at work. But like I said, am I going to be able to talk? And I had a, I had a few problems too, um, but I was very excited. But, I was at, but at, at 40%, I went about eight months, but it was a total of almost a year that I had complications with Bell's palsy, Bell's palsy the whole time. That's insane. And, and it's, I think it's really great that we're, that we're chatting about it and that you wanted to bring it up because um, it's something that if, if my grandma didn't have it, I wouldn't have known what the hell it was. And it's nice to always know if something like this can randomly happen, like what to do you know, and, and, um, and it's, so it's really nice to bring awareness to that for people. And I hope no one gets it because it's sketchy and it's weird. It's the strangest thing when you look in the mirror and you're like, um, I need to practice gratitude when I can smile again because you can't smile. And you know, and what's, so, you know what's so weird, Freddie? So for me, I'm a smiley person too. I always, you know, you see me, I'm always smiling. And it was, it was when I first started going out to stores and like going to the grocery store, or going to the thing, and to buy something. They go, hi, good afternoon. I'm like, hi, good afternoon. Like, I looked, I felt like I was this mean guy. Yes. I didn't like that. I, didn't like that. I was but, the same way. And if you, if you smile big at them, you might scare them. Hey, good to see you. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. It's weird. So, yeah, you don't realize how much your smile, in, in our case, you know, in many people's cases, is a part of your in inviting people in to, to show that you're a kind, warm person. Um, and, and, you know, I use it all the time. We just don't yeah. realize it until it's taken away. And, you know, you That's and a I good both, point. I forgot all about that. And you and I both have, you know, I call them followers. They say family followers. And, I, and I'd be out and about. And I could recognize. And I had to tell them, I have Bell's palsy. I'm not being a mean person to you. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy to see. I'm happy to meet you. Um, I can't smile right now. I would, I would have to announce that to them sometimes. Or I say, I may sound a little yeah. weird. Because once I started getting better, once the face started coming back, um, they couldn't tell as much, but I still was like having a slurring of, of like certain words. And it was like, I'm, I'm okay, I'm not, I'm not being mean, I just, I, I'm happy to meet you. I'm, I don't want to be able to think I'm a dick or something. And be like, I met James Lott Jr. and he was like, so he was just like, he didn't smile at all. I'm like, well, no, I actually can't. Um, yeah, well, and you had it way worse, the fact that you had to deal with that for eight months. I fortunately, mine went away in like three weeks-ish. So I dealt with that for three weeks, but, um, but eight months, man, like, wow. 
I want to ask you, so, I mean, like, like you said, when you went back to work, when you were going back to work, how was that decision made that you were like, okay, I'm at this point in the Bell's palsy recovery. I think I'm ready to go back. And, and you talked to the producers, like, how did that all come out? I, I think I just told, I think, I, I don't really remember, I, I, but I didn't take any time off. Wow. Like it, it, I just came right back and they were like, well, let's shoot around it. I oh, think good. is what nice. happened. Okay. And, um, and cause we also didn't know how long it was going to last, but yeah, I, I, I actually don't remember now what, what took place, but I, I didn't have any days off. I don't think. And I think we just shot from the good side of my face. Cause most of the time, if you think about it, days is pretty profile you know, not be, pretty profile, but enough that you could hide yeah. this side of your face if you had to. So, um, yeah, because that, that's what it was. We just shot around it. And I just remember being bummed out because I had a lot of good scenes and I was like, I couldn't enjoy it. I was just trying to get through them. Oh, yeah. And so for three weeks when I, I remember yelling at Brian Dottillo in a scene or something and then our first love scene and a couple others where I was like, I, I'm just, I can't enjoy this and be in the moment because all I'm thinking about is my face and trying to get through this. So it kind of took away those three weeks of enjoyment. Um, but when it all came back, I was like, makes you stronger to have a story like that, you know? And I'm glad now that I look back, I'm like, I'm glad I pushed through and was able to not let something stop me and did my event and did my speech and did the event and like the carpet and the whole thing I did in DC and then did, you know, probably 15 shows on days. And, and then it just went away. Thank God. Well, that's why so, I want to do video. So some of you guys are listening to this audio. Hi, audio listeners. Uh, but if you want to see us in video, go to YouTube and you can see it on JLG Media. But I, just, I really wanted to show us our faces to show people because I'm, I'm part of a couple of facial paralysis groups and I'm doing some advocacy work for them. And I want to know that we, it, you know, for some people, you can't, you, you, you can push through it, do research on your own. About 40,000 people get this a year. No one's talking about it. Um, so that's why I'm talking about it. But that... Mm -hmm. You can't come through the other side, and I think it's just it just toughens you up. Is it so you like you get appreciation of how to close your eyes and brush your teeth and chew food, like all these things you never ever think about. Never. Yep. Never last, don't think about stuff. Laughing. I couldn't laugh. I couldn't sneeze. Couldn't cough. You know things like they think, they, or you could be weird the way you coughed, or the weird the way you sneezed, and it's just a weird. I mean, like blinking. Raising your eyebrows. I mean, all that stuff. It's just like, it's so, it's like, you never think about that. Ever. Exactly. It's a trip. So what else did you learn about yourself from, from that experience you think that just kind of, you know, brings you along? What sorts of things you learned? I mean, I, I think that was, um, that was, you know, I had a lot of defining moments in my life. I just turned 32 a couple of weeks ago and I had a pretty, uh, thank you. Um, I had a baby. Pretty, You're a baby. I'm still a baby. I know. I know. I love it. Um, but I, I had, um, you know, I had some rough patches in my life, but that, that was one of the first two or three that were like life defining where you realize that, you know, bad things can happen, that you're not invincible. And it really does work on your uh, ego and your humility and your gratitude. And I think that most teenagers, um, most young twenties, um, you know, that's that whole youthful um, optimism because you are in rose tinted glasses. And I think that invincibility factor, as you're seeing, even with some of the coronavirus, yeah. you, some of the younger generations like, I don't care. Yes. They don't have a perspective yet. So you can't be mad at them. They don't understand yet. I didn't understand. But Bell's palsy during that whole week and getting through that um, brought me to a new level of, of who I was as a person. And it, it was one of those defining moments in my life that I was just, I look back at my young self and I was proud that I didn't give up or that I didn't quit, that I pushed through. And I was like, wow, like good for you because even now I wouldn't want to get it. And I feel I'm much stronger and more mature as a person, but you know, just, so I just look back and I'm just like grateful that it was only three weeks and uh, you know, it gave me some humility and, and uh, a little check to my ego that you're not invincible. So appreciate life because you don't know what can happen. I know for me, it taught me to really look at my health um, and self-care. I mean, I've, I've been on a self-care crusade ever since in the last year. Because I, I, I got it in 2018, and we went to 2019, but I'm, I'm better. But um, it gave me a sense. I mean, I, I guess I lost like over 80 pounds since I was since I had it. And so I'm still continuing to lose weight. I'm still continuing to take care of myself. It's like, I want to live a long time if I can. And so that kind of woke yeah. me up to that and how I handle stress. 
how I handle conflict, how I handle anxiety. It's kind of taught me to really look at those things now. And because I don't, I don't want it again. I really don't want it again, not at all. Um, no, no, I, no, no. I can feel myself, like you said, I can feel I get a little stressed. Like my face will do like sometimes some weird things here and there. I'm like, okay, got it. Okay, got it. Okay, we got to change it. We got to change the thought. We got it. We got it. You know, I got it. Yeah, the whistling helps. I, I used to do it a lot more in like 14, 15, 16. I used to all the time. Um, but now I'm just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I, you, it could always come back at some point, but, um, you know, you have to just practice not being stressed and anxious. And so I think that just comes with working on yourself in general. And I think everybody in the world right now, because of social media, on top of the coronavirus, the human way of connecting is changing and us being constantly stimulated is uh, changing the way we are as humans and it's creating anxiety and stress. And I think we're going to have to, we'll eventually overcome this, you know, as a, as a race, we, we have to figure out how to deal in this new world. Um, and, and I'm glad people are talking about mental health. I'm glad people are talking about anxiety because yeah. I, yeah. you know, I don't feel as, cause I didn't, I didn't talk about my anxiety much in the past years. Uh, but I'm starting to do it a little more now. Uh, and, and I think it helps when I hear people that I watch that look so confident and are so successful. And I'm like, wait, they had a panic attack or they, they get nervous before doing a stand up show, but they're, they've been doing it for 25 years. Like, Oh wait, they just look confident because it's all the practice, but they are anxious. So I'm okay. It's not just me. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just really great just to talk everything out. And we're, we're all growing as, as humans here by everyone sharing all their ups and downs in life. And it's bringing us closer together. I did an interview with uh, a president of this association that I'm part of, and she's great. And, and I got her to kind of open up a little bit about some stuff. And after the interview, she was like, should we leave that in? I go, yes. People want connection. They want to, people feel like they're alone. I, I, how ironic that is, because we, like I said, we have all this TV and Zoom and all these things and, and Instagram and Twitter, but people still feel alone. And so they want to feel like they're not alone. So I like what you're saying that people want to get, they want a connection. They want to feel like this person that's the head of our association, she feels things too. It doesn't show that you're weak or anything. Talking is yeah. okay. And I always say for men, especially we're raised anorexic in our emotions. And I feel like we need to exercise, you know, excise, like get that out of the way. It's like, no, you can talk about your problems. You can talk about how yeah. you're feeling. Um, I've had anxiety attacks. We were like, you're James Lodge Jr. I said, no, I, I am not, I'm fearless person mostly, but I've had anxiety attacks about certain things, and their and anxiety attacks are horrible. Panic attacks. I, I when I had my first one, I had my first one. I was in my forties, and I was like, "What is this? My heart beating fast. I can't. I'm like, I couldn't breathe. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm having a panic attack in the middle of my first one. I'm like, recognizing I had a panic attack. And part of was like, this is kind of interesting, but it's happening to me right now. Like, I didn't like it, and um, but I didn't. People, but no one back then were talking about it. But now I'm seeing people talk about it more and more now. I love that please mental health is I, really yeah and, and and it's and i think people feel more alone and disconnected because we're only giving people a portion of ourselves the reason that you feel good with your family and friends is because you know them on a deeper level but yet when you watch people on instagram or you watch people on tv you think you know them like friends and family you see them in the, when i see like a celebrity in the store i go i i go oh as if it's my cousin right. but i don't know that celebrity so yet People are watching people online thinking they know them, but if you don't go deep and really get to know Freddie Smith deep, then it's going to be hard to truly connect and feel that connection with somebody. So I, I'm working on feeling more comfortable even with our podcast. I, me and Alyssa have been talking. I was like, we should start going back in time and sharing some of these huge stories in our life or things that we went through, even though it's old, no one ever heard those stories. Yeah. And I think it could bring value because we didn't have a podcast back then. Yeah. But I think we should start talking exactly how we feel. And the more people feel comfortable, the more everyone's going to start peeling back their layers because we all put on that, that front a little bit, you know, to, to, and I think it's important to bring your best self. Like oh, yeah. if you and I were to go to lunch and I wasn't having a good day, you wouldn't want me to sit there and be in a mood. Like I'd want to be like, Hey, we scheduled this lunch to have fun. I'm going to bring my best self. Um, it's just that balance between, you know, sharing what you're really feeling, but then also staying positive at the same time. So well, yeah, we're so trying to the positive, the positive, not so positive thing. It's kind of like, I'm going to show you my best life, but then also I'll show you some parts of me that are really authentic to you that this is, you know, underneath this. I am, I am fortunate in these things, 
but then also these things are happening too. And it's like, it, it doesn't have to be one or the other. I mean, you can, you can, you can be happy and have sad moment. I mean, I mean, it's a, you know, it doesn't. Yeah, happen. yeah, absolutely. I yeah. totally agree. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But thank you, Faye Smith, for sharing your story, because I've been wanting to do this, and I think it's going to help a lot of people just to see another face. We're, we're, we're fine. We're doing okay. We got through it. We're fine. We're smiling. Yeah. Everything's, we're smiling. Everything's working. Everything's working. Um, exactly. But, but thanks for your time for doing this. Oh, thanks for having me. I, I really enjoyed the conversation. Same here. Tell people where they can find you and all the kind of stuff on these social medias. Yes, um, Instagram. Uh, you can. I think you can just look up Freddie Smith, and I'll pop up there. And then on YouTube, which we've been spending a whole lot of time on, uh, full length videos. Uh, so go to YouTube, type in the Freddie and Alyssa Show or Freddie Smith, and you'll find us. Um, and yeah, connect, comment, uh, let me know uh, what's going on. Ask some questions. I always love taking questions from the from the audience and the fans, so that I can add it into the show. I love when people ask things. So uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Yes, and folks, a lot of help is a lot of help.com. Uh, also, a lot of help is on every streaming platform you can think of, from Spotify to Pandora to iHeartRadio to Spreaker everywhere. Um, this, these videos are also on YouTube, JLJ Media. Go ahead and follow me there while you're there. Subscribe. And again, yeah, comment. And let me know what you think about what we're talking about. If you're a Bell's Palsy person who's a survivor or a person who's going through right now, talk to us. Let us know how you're feeling. We hear you. We, we see you. We hear you. We know exactly how hard it can be and how scary it can be and how alone feeling it can be too when you're laying there and you can't move from half your face. So we are there with you. We understand. Everyone, please stay safe and sane.